Welcome all to Learn You, an SNHU support podcast. I'm your host, academic coach, Kayla Guzel, and this is a show for learners. Now more than ever, people are learning online, and Southern New Hampshire University is leading the way. We empower all learners, working adults, military families, refugees, and everyone in between, because we believe knowledge is power, and access to education can change the world. Academic Support is a dedicated team employed by Southern New Hampshire University, and we help students succeed. We've got our finger on the pulse of this institution because we talk to learners just like you every day. More than basic proofreading or math help, our peer tutors and academic coaches listen to students' unique needs and help them build transferable life skills alongside academic skills. We coach, tutor, and build resources that help students teach themselves. And now, we have this show dedicated to what our learners are going through. Anxious about math? Terrified of writing? Struggling with time management or the work-life school balance? We're here to help you through. Today's topic is the importance of asking for help. There are many ways to do this and many environments when this need can come up. Whether you're at work, at home, or at school, there will come a time where you feel stuck and you need to reach out for help. SNHU has many teams dedicated to helping students, the library for research, career for resumes and interview tips, advising for your curricular planning, and an academic support we strive to help students help themselves through skills-based coaching and tutoring. One way to get that help in a structured group format is through our group coaching and study hall options. To get started with these resources and talk about this topic, I have our group coaching experts with me today, academic coach Megan Ryma, and our training and quality assurance coordinator, Amanda Steer. Greetings to you, Megan and Amanda. Thanks for coming on. Hi, Kay. Thanks for having us. We're very excited to be here. Thank you. I've been looking forward to this. I know. This is our second take. We tried to record last week, listeners, and uh, KK left her headset somewhere. So (laughs) my sweet friends at Academic Support were patient with me, and I was like, help. So it's kind of pertinent for today's topic. I love it. I think that you had the knowledge and the discipline, Kaylee, to ask for help. And that's something that we definitely look for in our learners. Oh, so touching. It's true. Um, Because, yes, because the uh, academic support environment is something that you self-elect. And I mean, an advisor and instructor could recommend it, but you got to reach out, make that appointment, schedule that study hall, um, send in that paper for feedback and ask for what you need. So I wanted to start on sort of a personal level and, and wherever possible, I'll probably bring in academic topics or ask you about experiences with your students or in um, Megan and Amanda's case now talking to our staff and, and we work closely with the coaches and tutors themselves, helping the helpers, if you will. So I'll try to bring up places where I think we can talk about examples there. But um, I want to start with maybe personal, maybe professional, go where you want to go. Um, but what are your experiences with asking for help or being asked for help? See, I think <laughs> this is a great, this is a great topic because it, it revolves around so much of what happens in our lives and not only in our education, but in our personal lives as well. And I know a lot of our learners are, you know, working with large scale teams on Zoom or through offices now that we're kind of trickling back. And I know a lot of our learners have families at home. And sometimes I feel like you kind of put everything on your shoulders, right? You kind of take it on, you have to be in charge of the world and do everything yourself. And I think sometimes because you just want to tackle it and get it done, you don't take a pause and you don't ask for help. And I think that asking for help is incredibly important. I am guilty of this all the time where I just will do it and get it done. And I've come to learn that if I just reach out and if I just make myself a tiny bit vulnerable, I'll get help. And this is starting with my nine-year-old son. Um, If I don't have the time to take out the trash, I'll just say, hey, could you help me take out the trash? Do you think you could take five minutes and walk it right out to the trash barrel? And he will say, sure, mom, no problem. But I was doing it before and I'd never thought to ask him, but he's nine. He has responsibilities. He can do it. And I think that that segues a lot into many students that I have worked with in the past have come to me and they say, you know, it's taking me forever to get here because I was just too afraid to ask for help. I thought I could do it on my own. And um, I do realize now that 
maybe this is what I needed to kind of get myself back on track. And I think it's really brave when you have the opportunity to kind of pause and say, maybe I do need to ask for help. And I think taking that first self can, that, that first step can be a little nerve wracking. Um, but I think once you ask, there's this kind of Zen calm, like this sigh of relief, And then you kind of get yourself moving like a train, right? You're moving in the right direction. You're kind of amping up. You're moving, you're moving. But asking is the first step. Mm -hmm. And I think if you practice, sometimes practice can get you a little bit further than you think. And it can be a little ridiculous. And you can look at yourself in the mirror and be like, hey, certain person, I need your help with X, Y, and Z. And if you repeat it again and again, you kind of beat that fear conundrum that you run into when you're taking yourself out of the box and maybe realizing that, yeah, you can't do it all. And that's okay. Cause nobody's perfect. What do you think, Amanda? What are maybe I, some methods know, of I've, asking for help or just, I've like, been like, thinking of, I've been thinking about this and I think for so long as you're growing up, you're congratulated over and over for doing something all by yourself. Mm-hmm. And those huge milestones, even from, you know, another kid example, I have a three-year-old and it's like, yes, you did it all by yourself. You, you climbed this play structure, you, you know, all of those things. And even you learn to drive on your own, all of those things that you do. And so for so long, we're congratulated and you did it. And you can say, I did this. So then suddenly come across something and it's all new. We're all new at something constantly, right? There's always a point where you don't have all of the knowledge or the ability or the resources to get it done. So I think that's where I I feel I've had a hard time asking for help. I've got this little voice saying, but you should be able to do it on your own. And so for me, that that's always, even, even before getting to what's my favorite way to ask for help or to be asked for assistance, I actually have to admit, oh, I might not I might not be doing something right, or I might not know how to do it and I need help. So that in itself is its own learning process. But uh, if, if I could pass on a nugget of wisdom is ask for help early because it only gets harder the longer you wait, the stakes get higher. And it is something like Megan said that needs to be practiced. So even if it starts with asking your child to take out the trash or it help, It starts with making that appointment with one of our peer tutors. Sometimes it just means I'm going to go into live chat and see what this is about. That's, I think those little successes of asking for help give you, give anybody what they need uh, to feel vulnerable and willing to admit, I don't know it all, or I might be doing something incorrectly. Well, I hope listeners can absorb the, the brunt of our, our love for you and, and how, uh, supportive academic support really is. I'm so proud to be on this team because I feel like vulnerability is is extremely welcome and, and we're kind of wired for it where we've, we've all had experiences in coaching sessions in this room anyway, where you get on the phone with the student and she's already crying or he's already full, you know, full throttle anxiety. And I think Amanda's spot on about the longer you wait, the harder it can be. Um, but by the same token, it's not, it's never too late. Um, and I will remind at the end of the show how to find us. Um, I was reminded of two, and this will be in the show notes. It is a book called Nonviolent Communication Language of Life that I've been really into for this past year or so. Because um, Megan kind of put it in that template of, I need help with X, Y, Z, right? Re- rehearsing in the mirror exactly how you're going to ask for help and also in the show notes there's an interesting article about like the do's and don'ts of asking for help and um when it's us listeners you can ask however you want i don't care if you scream help or (laughs) um write help in all caps in live chat or what have you um there are many ways to ask and, and we'll take all of them um, but a cool thing about nonviolent communication is that it does state that sort of actionable positive need when you have a chance to reflect on what it is you actually need. Um, It's all kind of feelings based and then you ask the person or the entity, would you be willing to, you know, fill this gap of a need in my life? So in this case, we're talking about academic help, academic support or a skills-based support. 
but it does involve some reflection. And I think a lot of that can happen in sessions or in groups where people have the aha moment of, um, oh, when I finish reading my materials for the week in this class, I don't remember anything. And you start to notice a pattern and then you can ask for help based on that pattern. Anyway, um, why do we think uh, in this room that asking for help can be so hard? I know Amanda touched upon like having to admit deficiency or not yetness, as we discussed in episode four, we talked about not yet grading and growth mindset and such. So um, why else do we, do we maybe think that asking for help can be difficult for those who do find it difficult? Oh, well. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is not only, okay, so I have to be vulnerable and ask someone for help. What if they can't help me? And I think that can be a scary uh, spot to be in. I also think that uh, I'm thinking of Mr. Rogers and didn't, there was a great quote from him and his mom says, look, always look for the helpers. Mm -hmm. when something sad is happening when something is yeah when something bad is happening always look for the helpers and how do you identify those people and I feel like we academic support we are those helpers that is everybody like I mean I've always enjoyed helping somebody out whether it is academics or a coach and strategies in helping our students or my other you know i knit and meal plan and I'm passionate about that outside and I love helping my friends like oh I'll help you meal plan for the week let's do it I, so it's I think people enjoy helping each other it gives you a sense of fulfillment but I think that that fear comes of, of why is it so hard to ask for help what if they can't help me that's definitely something that I don't think I've, I've ever considered like front burner in my mind I think to build off that too, this reminds me of a book that I bought for my son when he was probably about five years old and he was going through some, some challenging times with dealing with his anxiety. And it is called The What If Monster. It is a great book. If you have kids at home, I highly recommend getting it. If you don't, I still highly recommend getting it. Um, and it's about all the bad what ifs that can happen. What if I ask for help? What if I climb the tree and scrape my knee? What if I fail? And the moral of the story is, but what if you don't? What if you succeed? And you'll never know until you try. So you have to kind of take that leap of faith. And it's hard. It is hard to make yourself vulnerable, like Amanda said. It's hard to really put yourself out there, especially when we spend all this time, especially as adults, building up walls to protect ourselves. So the good news is, so what if you come to me and you say, I really need help with statistics? Well, you don't want help from statistics from me because I don't know <laughs> basic math, um, yeah. but I might not be able to help you on a statistics problem, but I sure can help you finding somebody who can and finding the right resources and getting you to where you need to go to get that support. That's why I think this team in academic support is so wonderful because we have all these resources and ways to get you help. And even if we're not the exact right person that you need, we can surely find a solution for you in no time at all. So I think that's one of our strongest um, assets here in this team is that we will find a way and we always practice with, I don't know, but let's find out together. And I think that journey is, is really important. And I think a lot of students are hesitant to open themselves up, but once they do, it's kind of that aha moment because they're like, oh, well, I didn't realize everything existed here. And there are so many different ways that I can get help. And I think uh, me personally, um, I encourage you all to explore and see what we have out there and see how you can make it work for you and help build your skill set. I like what you both said in, in a couple of ways. One is I, I wrote down the what if monster um, so that people can can find that in the show notes. Um, and I like how you said, Megan, that it's not just for kids. <laughs> anxiety thinking about um, these futures. And in episode one, we talked about mindfulness and the present moment and how, you know, 
depression usually comes from thinking about the past and anxiety usually comes from thinking about the future. Um, but I think that brings us back to our first step. You can have the catalyst of, I'm gonna go into my course, or I'm gonna ask my advisor like how to access academic support, find that module, click on it and just explore. And if you feel um, especially anxious about certain things, like I know we all have our monsters, you can start in the live chat and just uh, chickity chickity chat. Hey, I do want to let you people. know that the actual title of the book is Jonathan James and the What If Monster by Michelle okay, Nelson great. Schmidt. Um, so since I brought up live chat, we've already talked about that. We've already talked about workshops. This is actually um, the last episode of, of sort of season one. So would either of you care to talk about group coaching and how it's structured and how it works, what makes it different from other things that we offer? Sure. Um, I can definitely hop in. We have been growing our group coaching model over the last year and a half. Amanda and I uh, worked as a team and we have developed a bunch of different content <laughs> over quite an extended period of time. I think we first started working together on this group coaching model and expanding it from what it was back in the fall of 2019. Um, and so ever since then, we have kind of just moved full steam ahead and really worked on developing these areas where students can come. And the great thing about group coaching is that it is an environment where you meet with six to eight of your peers and you are uh, basically led by an academic group coach. And the difference between group coaching and a workshop or group coaching in a one-on-one is, -on -one is that you do have talking points and things are facilitated, but the content is digested in a group setting in a way where there is a cohort and collaboration and you work together with your peers to learn from each other and to build mentorships and to build knowledge and to talk about your experience experience in your academic travels in Southern New Hampshire University. So it is a way that steps out of the lecture series and really wants to hear your voice and your thoughts and your questions and come to the platform with how do I develop this? But not only do I want to hear the aspect from um, my peers, I, I want to hear from an academic coach and I want to see how all that works together as a well-oiled machine. Um, so it is a great space. They are carried on um, throughout a term between six to eight weeks. They are one hour every week and you show up at the same time and the talking points change throughout the term, much like the modules in your Brightspace classes change throughout the term. And um, we really want to build up that networking piece and showing different ways to connect. Um, Group coaching is a fantastic opportunity to really have your voice heard throughout the university and to know that there are other people out there in the exact same boat as you. Um, and so we are growing all different kinds of group coaching models. We have some really successful college reading, college writing, college uh, research. We have um, some others in the pipeline. We have developed um, executive functioning small groups. We've ex uh, developed fiction and microfiction and conflict and resolution and screenwriting. So there's all of these different kinds of topics that are being covered um, down the line. We're hoping for programming. We're hoping for business writing. We're hoping for statistics and psychology. So we're really kind of taking that um, step forward to gather these students and to give them an environment where they can develop and grow and really learn from each other. I think the uh, really neat opportunity in group coaching is that the students are from across a variety of courses. Mm -hmm. So they're not all, we're not all plucking them from their English 122 or 123 class. They might be in similar programs, but they're at different spots in it. Or, or they're doing their general studies, um, general education requirements. And so, you know, I would have students come into mine and going, oh my gosh, in my math class, and I don't understand this assignment. And they're being vulnerable enough to ask for help. And I have the answers as the, as the academic coach. The academic coach in the room has the answers, but the students get to actually be the expert too and be the helper and say, oh, I took that math class two terms ago. Look at this portion of the rubric. 
let's and we talk it out together so I think it's a really neat I think that's a um, really fantastic part of group coaching is your the students are going to ask for help but they also get to be the helpers and it creates this nice sense of community and support for each other are there any uh specific study halls or group coaching events happening now uh, on the schedule that you think students might want to check out? I would say um, right now uh, we are running, we are running college research and college writing. Mm -hmm. Um, That has started for EW5. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's already well on its way. And what I would be on the lookout for is our new groups launching in EW6. Mm -hmm. Um, So we will be running college writing and college research again. Uh, We will also be having a college reading uh, addition to that. Um, And like Amanda said, uh, this is not just for students that are lit majors or creative writing majors. This is for everybody who ever has to write a paper or Mm -hmm. discover their rubric. So we're looking for students all across the board, grad, undergrad, all kinds of backgrounds. Um, In addition, we do run multiple study halls every term. We have two open forum study halls that are drop-in based. You can ask questions about the university, about your courses, about academic support. Um, We also have a criminal justice study hall. We have a psychology study hall. Um, We are also in the development and rollout of a clinical mental health group coaching module. Um, We are developing study halls for ESOL learners. So there is a variety of different places. You can see where the study halls are being listed on our workshops. Um, They're always listed every month. So you can see what's being offered and you can hop right into those. Um, And then we will also be working to send you out information about the group coaching um, opportunities that are launching for every term. Cool. Um, so like, a, like an email or, or, or like something. an email, um, we might be able to get it out on social media. So Ooh. as we're, I know, I know it's very fancy Insta. <laughs> as we're launching and as we're prepping for these to launch, um, be on the lookout, check your Insta, check your Twitter, um, check your Facebook, uh, in check your email. So, um, that's what we're currently in the process of developing. Amanda, did I miss any study halls? I don't think I did. Did I? We have, let's see. Criminal justice. We do. We currently offer a clinical mental health counseling study hall. Okay, mm-hmm. that, so do we, that's the one that was. But the pop into one of those generalized study halls. Megan is your academic coach hosting those and ask the questions and say, "Hey, I want information." Or listeners, ask your academic coach or pop in a live chat and say, "Hey, I heard on the podcast there's these group coaching things. I want in." Yeah, and we'll Give get you connected. Deets. Yep. Sometimes Give them dates. we, yeah, we enjoy helping students find the way to the correct resource and the correct group or, or support or help that they need. So a quick, quick chat for with sure, our for sure. live chat experts, you'll be well on your way to joining a study hall or small group. Excellent advertisement, darling. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to do a quick definition for any listeners out there who do not currently go to SNHU. Uh, EW something means eight weeks something, and it's how we name our terms here. So um, every term has uh, a year, EW, and then a number. So (laughs) (laughs) 21 EW, one is your classic fall semester, the one that starts at the end of August, early September. so that's how we we plan these out is is by those terms just and if you ever hear us say snoo that's snhu localized we actually live in southern new hampshire we're from around here i want to harken back to to one thing that uh, amanda said i only have a couple more questions like planned here but we could gab um is the doing something on your own or, or, you know, we talked a lot about growth mindset in episode four and how we praise children, um, how we, and and Megan mentioned like how many walls we learn to build coping mechanisms, whatever, as adults, it all starts somewhere. Um, I'm not telling you to call your parents around mother and father's day and, and blame them for all your neuroses here. But sometimes we, we do get this messaging when we're young, uh, from someone that 
X belief is is true. So doing something all by yourself is good. Um, I, I wanted to highlight that that's an extremely American thing to think, believe, or hear as a young person. Um, Megan mentioned English for speakers of other languages, study halls, and how we are building those. I've mentioned before that that's one of my specialities here. Um, so any listeners who have um, any kind of diverse background or spent time in other cultures, other countries, um, might not actually have as much of a qualm with asking for help because their culture is more communal that way. It's designed that way. Um, so if you've gotten this far and you're from an extremely communal country and you're like, no, that's fine. I ask for help all the time. Um, then come on down too. We're building more things for you every day. Um, I also wanted to just like tell a story. Will you humor me? Yes. <laughs> About this. Um, and I don't want to bring anybody down, but it was just like a, a sad thing that happened that um, reminded me of this truth of how um, thinking that you can do something alone or, or with just one other person is kind of detrimental sometimes. So this one time I'm driving through downtown Dover, New Hampshire, which is where I used to live until uh, recently. And I was going to a pumpkin patch. You know what a pumpkin patch is? <laughs> <laughs> listeners it's like a it's like a farm full of pumpkins and um it's also a corn maze so we cut here in new england uh we get bored in the fall and we cut mazes into corn stalks and get lost on purpose so my husband and i were driving to the corn maze slash pumpkin patch and we were at a stoplight just about to go again and we saw this medium elderly couple probably like in their 70s and the man fell like on his head and you know was injured and um my husband being from a communal country he's turkish was like this elder just fell on his face and no one was doing anything and he had this little tiny wife trying to help him up and so we pulled over and helped him uh, and they had been like walking downtown and their car was kind of far away. The guy had had a stroke uh, recently and he was just like starting to exercise again. So I sat with him and gave him tissues because he was bleeding. And my husband drove the wife back to their house so she could get her car and bring him to the hospital. Sad story short, <laughs> um, when they got back, we were helping him into the car and she was in the driver's seat and she tried to give us money for helping her. And that just like blew both of our minds, but I kind of understood it a little more easily. But can you imagine that? Just like responses, I'm just telling a tale. It's, it's crazy, but it's not shocking, which I think right. is the disappointing factor in and of itself. Um, it, it, it's, yeah, I don't know. I, I have a background where it's like you just help people. People yeah. need help. You just help them. Like, but I don't <laughs> think, like, it, to me, it's second nature. Um, but I think we've kind of lost that mm -hmm. a little bit. I, I feel like everybody has kind of become so protected and, and so weary of certain situations that that natural instinct to just help each other and to reach out has kind of been dulled a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, but I think it's great that you helped them. I think that it's, it's sometimes it's a little hard to find, but I do think that we live in a society when, where it's not necessarily okay to be vulnerable all the time. And I feel mm -hmm. like people should pride themselves on their vulnerability. In this year <clears throat> that we've had this unprecedented I know everyone's sick of hearing that term yeah. here. And these unprecedented times. I've actually, it's, <laughs> it's been fascinating. I feel like my city got smaller because we really got to know our neighbors and we were mm -hmm. all helping each other out. And the single retired woman who lives across the street from us, we 
I'd bake bread and drop it off fully masked and gloved, like shoving yeah. it through the cat door, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just here, have some bread. Cat and, door. and we went, we recently bought kayaks and I was struggling to get mine uh, back out of the water. Mm-hmm. And, um, and somebody came up and just, just helped me out. And I don't think I wasn't expecting it. And I was so thankful. Um, Mm -hmm. but I, I think that we're a little bit, I've seen more, uh, folks trying to help or a little bit more grace being given and support and just, oh yeah, let me hold the door. That's the big thing. Holding doors is coming back. Holding doors, yes. Because once one of them opens, nobody wants to touch the door handle to open it again. Right. So that's, we've noticed everyone's holding doors open. If they're not automated, I've been Mm -hmm. noticing everyone's holding doors open for everybody else. I don't know. I think everyone's had a tough year. And so they're willing to, those little things mm-hmm. go a really long way. Right. And, and we've had little you know, micro connections almost. Yeah. Um, I think everyone was starved for connections this year. So even just having someone hold the door open for me and being able to say, thank you. Oh and God, thank you. Yeah. Let's make my day. You held thank the door you open. so much. Um, one of the articles that I'm citing in the show notes, uh, listeners and guests, is um, about, there's, well, there's a few quotes in it. it Studies show that, yeah, so studies show that, and that is a, a signal phrase, writers. Studies show that um, humans are naturally predisposed to altruistic behavior, so that we do like to help, and that a little bit, surveys showed, is because the helper gets a byproduct, get a little dopamine or serotonin. I forget which uh, hormone comes out when you are connecting with people. But what are some of your favorite byproducts of helping students and coaches and tutors in your current positions here at SMHU? What do you get out of it, man? I just love when the student has the light bulb turn on. Mm-hmm. I just love hearing the genuine excitement in learners' voices um, that they're like, I figured it out. I did this. I figured <laughs> it out. It may have been as easy as, you know, hopping over a crack in the sidewalk, or it may, has, may have been as difficult as climbing Mount Everest. But when they get it and you can just hear it, it is the most thrilling thing. Because it's like, all right, it's going, it's moving, it's yeah. it's taking off like a, a rocket train again. ship. <laughs> oh, now it's a rocket ship. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> not a train. I know I'm, I'm segueing vehicles, um, <laughs> or modes of transport. Modes of transport actively. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's that to me is, and, and and another thing that's incredibly fulfilling and, and a little sad is when a, a student comes to me and says, "I don't need you anymore." <sighs> because I can do it on my own. Um, I think that that is so fulfilling because they're not meant, you you know, you as learners out there listening, you're not meant to be with us forever because you want to get the tools that you need to be successful and to move on and move up. Mm -hmm. And that's the model. um, That's the model. That's That's, the model. By design, that's the way it is. Yeah. Um, But it is, it is so lovely being like you, thank you so much for working with me. I don't need to come anymore. I don't need to be here anymore. I think I am, I am satisfied with what I have received. And I think that I have enough confidence to move on and continue the process forward. And I think that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, And that's why I love meeting with my students. I think it's fantastic. That's so I guess I do training and quality assurance. So my learners are actually the coaches and tutors right? and helping them have what they need to be, be ready for students and help the students and learners be successful. So my favorite byproduct of helping the coaches and tutors who are helping the students is when the coaches and peer tutors come back to me and say, I just had the most fantastic session and we used this strategy that we talked about and we're doing you know these new things and and then even better is when I get the when I hear from the student when we hear from the student testimonials saying wow I really felt a connection with my coach and and just hearing them be successful and then their students are that are successful because of them and because of 
all of these conversations and trainings and uh, it's just, it's that, it's the aha moment for them too. Well, thank you so much. I think that kind of wraps up what I wanted to know about. I think whether our listeners are SNHU learners or they are just listening because they're intrigued by it, it's Mm -hmm. ask, ask for help. You might, you might learn something new out of it too, about yourself, about it's, it's scary, but you can do it. Well, thank you, ladies. I really appreciated your, your guestitude, your guesthood this <laughs> afternoon. Um, I, I know listeners appreciate your warm hearts and voices. And um, I just want to say thanks for coming on before I recap. So thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Kaylee. Thank you. Even if you can't find the right help right away, we can find the right place, person, or resource for you. It's part of the job. It's part of the deal. Number two, don't fight that what-if monster alone. This is a community effort. It takes a village. Help comes with the cost of tuition. By the way, all of this uh, groovy stuff we're talking about is free, you know, with tuition. Um, try group coaching uh, or study halls for a chance to work with peers. Check your socials and email for more communications about these offerings. And of course, for the next season of the Learning You podcast. And be the help you would have wanted and know that we love to help you. So that's it for today, dear listeners. I'd like to close this episode with an excerpt from the Academic Support Mission. We believe that all learners are capable of growth with support and collaboration. So let's collaborate today. Existing students can find academic support right under modules in your courses. If you're not learning with SNHU yet, please think about it. You'll have the best support system in higher ed behind you. Visit snhu.edu to learn more. This has been Learning You with Coach Katie Wiesel. And from all of us at Academic Support, thanks for tuning in. We hope to work with you soon.